Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. So today is a pretty nice day outside, one of the first days of spring. And I've got a pretty cool scope set up behind me with all of the accessories that one could want for the next R6 SC and 8 SC. And if you've seen any of my other videos, that's the scope that I kind of recommend for your first real serious telescope. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. All right, so let's check this out. Let's do a quick walk around to see what we've got going on and then we'll kind of start to jump in into uh, specific accessories, what they all do, and if I recommend them or not. By the way, if you're not familiar, my name is Vlad, like I said in the intro, um, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com. I've owned over a hundred scopes of all different types. Um, so. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I'm pretty familiar with astronomy and uh, yeah, I thought I'd just give you guys kind of an, of an overview of all these things and if they're worth, you know, your hard earned money, let's check it out. All right, so first and foremost, we'll talk about the uh, case that Celestron makes specifically for the next star scopes. Uh, this is actually a pretty nice unit, you know, I'll say. It's not a fully hard case, although it does have, you know, kind of like hard corners and that type of deal. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like a hybrid soft uh, hard case. Very well protected. I mean, you'd really have to beat this thing up to, you know, to damage the scope in there. Um, it does have wheels so you can roll it. There's a handle that pulls out on this side here. Um, so that's really neat. You know, it's got plenty of Celestron uh, branding on it, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on if you're trying to hide that, you know, there's a telescope in there or not. Um, and then, yeah, so kind of zips up essentially this is the main scope compartment i've got the dust cap in there and a couple of random things like the manual it does come with one divider uh, so depending on the model that you have you know you may you know want to divide this out to where it'll kind of you know uh, prevent the scope from flopping around in there um it does have this pretty big pocket that opens here that again kind of zips up um and then there's uh you know, there's pockets here that you could put accessories in. Uh, plenty of room in here. I mean, really, uh, this will fit most of your basic kit, you know, that, you know, the, the scope kind of comes with. Including some of the accessories. Uh, they fit pretty well in there. Um, you know, my, my general thought on the case is if you're going to transport the scope a lot, uh, you know, it's kind of a worthwhile investment. They are not uh, cheap though, so that is kind of a downside. Realistically, if you're using the scope primarily from home, I wouldn't consider this to be a necessity. So as we're kind of going along, I'm gonna kind of rate these accessories from one to 10, uh, from one being, um, you know, you not really needing it probably, to 10 being like a must have. I'd probably rate, if you're traveling a lot, I'd probably rate this as a seven. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a case, like I transport a lot of my scopes without a case, uh, but it is really nice. Uh, if you're not traveling a lot, I'd probably rate it like a two. You really don't need it. I mean, unless you have the money to burn and you want this to look nice in your garage, if you're not traveling a lot, yeah, I probably wouldn't bother. All right, so the next accessory, this isn't really next star specific, but I'm gonna mention it, deserves mention. Uh, dedicated astronomy chair, if you're doing visual astronomy, if you're doing like EAA or astrophotography, you're probably not going to care too much about this. Uh, but these chairs are really cool, so it's totally height adjustable. You can adjust it, you know, to whatever height you need. Um, I, you know, like out of all my astronomy accessories, this is one thing that I use pretty much any time I'm observing. So highly, highly recommended. All right, so we'll kind of, you know, get into the scope here and we'll start from the bottom and kind of work our way up. So this is the Celestron uh, Lithium Ion Battery Pack. Uh, pretty cool. My favorite thing about it is that, it, you know, it straps onto the leg of the scope. So it doesn't take up very much room, you know. And you could really even carry it with the scope and mount, you know, if you're in pretty good shape. Um, Couple of things I like about it. One thing I really do not like about it, um, it does have a built-in red uh, flashlight. Um, this is not bad if you're like setting up equipment that type of deal to use, but it is pretty bright, so really it does kind of um, 
uh, ruin your night vision. Like if you're using it as like a map light or something like that, it's kind of too bright, really. Uh, but again, for like setting up, breaking down, like maybe at a star party, uh, pretty cool to have. Um, so you do have like a um, DC type of plug here that this will plug into your scope to power it or to recharge the batteries, what that's used for. There's also two uh, uh, USB plugs to where you can recharge, you know, anything that's USB. Now, this is kind of one thing that I do not like. Um, unless I'm just uh, not in tune with, uh, with uh, how this thing works, I guess. And if I'm not, please, you know, uh, leave me a comment below. Um, you cannot power both the DC and the USB plugs at the same time. I find that incredibly, you know, like, uh, not great because uh, a lot of times, you know, I'd like to be able to power you know two things at once and with this battery as far as i know anyway you cannot do that as far as you know, how long it'll last in that type of deal i've personally not really done a test on you know like an exhaustive like you know just uh full to rundown type of scenario i've used this thing pretty extensively I and mean, on your average night of seeing or i mean of uh viewing i've never run out of juice with this thing so if you're observing let's say like four or five hours um i think you know this will give you plenty of juice even in the cold i've used it during the winter uh which lithium ion batteries tend to last shorter in the winter this thing works great so yeah i'd say a one nighter is easy with this maybe even like two or three nights all right, so one to ten, what I rate this then? Um, you know, I think overall for the utility, for the size of it, and the, the fact that it mounts on the tripod, this thing is really cool. As long as you're okay with using just the single power source, um, you know, if you're only gonna be using a single power source at a time, I'd rate this uh, eight. Um, I think it's a pretty cool design. If you, you know, if you kind of want to do uh, power a couple of things at the same time, this really just wouldn't work for you. So I'd rate it a one all right so next thing that we got hiding away over here is the celestron wi-fi adapter and this usually plugs into the auxiliary port but since i've got the star sense plugged in you can't really do that there is a separate uh little accessory that you could buy that'll kind of split the auxiliary ports well which i'll include in the link i actually do not have one of those uh but this allows you to control your scope uh with either your phone like whether it's an iphone or android um, or with the tablet pretty cool gizmo um you basically use a version of sky safari to control this thing it's celestron's version unfortunately as far as i know you can't use sky safari itself yes you, you have to use that celestron app um for the price point though i think this is pretty cool um i find it to be useful i'd rate this a solid you know six to seven or so um pretty cool to have not an absolute necessity though so this isn't like one of the first things that i'd recommend picking up for your scope or anything like that all right so moving on this uh the star sense what does this thing do well basically what this does is it allows you to align the telescope full automatically essentially there's a camera in here in the lens uh let's check it out and instead of you doing a star alignment to where you basically you tell the scope you know to you know uh, what stars you're pointed at this thing will do everything automatically for you it essentially uses plate solving and it aligns the scope for you and cool accessory is it a must have um i mean you know if you've had a previous scope and you just kind of really have a hard time navigating the sky like especially if you're in a really light polluted area i think you know it's it's kind of more of a must have if you're pretty familiar with this nice sky, i mean it really doesn't take that long to point the scope you know at a few stars uh and you know the star sense is kind of expensive so i wouldn't necessarily call it a must have i'd say it's you know like a five for me personally it's more like a two i just really don't find it all that useful quite frankly all right next up we have a star diagonal and an eyepiece um what do i think about those well so if you have the next star 6 sc i really would just go ahead and do a two inch diagonal um that's a dielectric diagonal you know brand wise it doesn't really matter unless you're getting like a really high-end brand like you know ryan explorer scientific which is what this is um william optics like a few of the kind of like you know mid-tier brands they're all more or less the same quality uh it's kind of more of like of the draw you might get a really good one you might get kind of an average one but yeah these are all pretty good so i'd get a two inch if you have the 6sc if you have the 8sc like this one 
Um, issue with the two inch is that it will hit the mount here um, if you're kind of you know if the scope is pointed uh, up in the sky. So that is kind of a downside. So it's kind of hard to you know firmly recommend the two inch an inch and a quarter may be better, especially if you're not planning to buy a two inch eyepiece. If you're planning to buy two inch eyepieces. I would go ahead and do the two inch version. Um, eyepiece wise, I've got a whole separate video on this, not gonna get into it at all. Um, I would recommend the batter zoom as your first uh, serious telescope eyepiece. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, you've saw me recommend this eyepiece before. I love the eyepiece. You know, you might be figuring like, whoa, hey, like, you know, Vlad's always recommending this, then batter must be sending him truck uh, fulls of money, right? Um, uh, yeah, I doubt that they even know that it exists, so I just like the IP. <laughs> okay, so diagonal on eyepiece, um, you know, these I honestly rate as a 10, just because not only are you going to use these a lot with this scope, if you progress in the hobby, you're going to use them a lot with any other scope you might have. Um, so these, you know, like, I would recommend investing money into these as the first thing besides the next thing that I'm going to talk about. All right, and the next thing is, actually, I think it's the cheapest accessory too, <laughs> and that's just a simple dew shield. Uh, so these things, uh, basically, let me actually take it off. So it goes, you know, on the front of your scope, just like so. Um, serves two purposes. So if you're, you know, observing, actually kind of like, you know, where I am in the neighborhood type of situation, it actually blocks a lot of the straight light from hitting the corrector plate, you know, on the front. So that's really cool. Uh, and then the other thing, as the name implies, if, you know, you're observing in any kind of moist environment, it will help to uh, prevent dew from forming. So get the way to think about dew. It's kind of like rain that you don't see uh, so typically you know it kind of essentially like falls from top down so unless your scope is pointed totally up for a long time um you know the dew cap just kind of blocks dew from forming on your uh dew shield or from on your corrector plate i should say number wise uh i would recommend this as a 10 easily i mean i think these things brand new are like 30 bucks an absolute must have uh yeah buy it all right, all right, guys, I hope you guys found that helpful. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what some of the most common accessories are from the next uh, 6 or 8 SC um, and kind of know what the accessories do. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the box below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.